Hi, I'm Allison Tate, and I am a professor of law at the University of Richmond, and I am here to unpack for you the big spectacular mess that is Britney Spears' conservatorship. I know, like me, you are interested in watching what's happening. So, in case you're actually not, in case you haven't been paying attention for 20 years, uh, Britney Spears was the princess of pop in the early 2000s, right? She had some really spectacular hits like Womanizer. Um, oops, I did it again. My favorite is If You Seek Amy, but that's not important. What's important is that in 2008, um, after a number of struggles with her mental health, with some addiction issues or concerns, and a lot of struggles with the media, Britney's father was appointed to be her conservator. Now, a conservator is like a guardian, same thing, basically a person with legal control over another person, both that person's estate, so the finances, and the, the person, the body. Uh, so from so starting in 2008, uh, the father exercised control over Brittany in both big and small ways. Um, we know that he regulated her food intake. He had uh, control over her. We now know the color of her kitchen cabinets, um, but also larger things, her dating life, her royalties, her work schedule, where she performed, when she performed, and even her reproductive rights. Uh, we also now know that as early as 2014, Brittany had objections to her father's interference, to her father's conservatorship, and she's been repeating these objections ever since then. She repeated them last summer in a court filing, and the d judge has always declined to remove her father. The judge last year again declined to remove Jamie Spears. The judge did um, extend the appointment of a professional co-conservator, and that's through September of this year. And they also added Bessemer Trust as a fiduciary. And that was Brittany's request. Then this year in April, Brittany requested to make uh, a statement in front of the court at a hearing and her request was granted. And just last week, Brittany made a 24 minute statement in front of a Los Angeles court. So what did she say? I bet you can guess. Uh, so in her statement, she basically detailed the ways in which she finds her conservatorship to be abusive. Um, and she detailed some of the financial abuses, and this is what she said. She said, all I want is to own my money. I shouldn't be in a conservatorship if I can work and provide money and work for myself and pay other people. She also revealed uh, the extensive reproductive control and coercion that her conservators are exerting. She said, I want to be able to get married and have a baby. I was told I'm not able to get married. I have an IUD inside me so I won't get pregnant, but this so-called team won't let me go to the doctor to take it out. Wow. So what are some of the takeaways from this entire uh, situation? I think there are two in particular that we should be thinking about. So one is that this is a remarkably uh, unprecedented use of a conservatorship. Usually this is a legal arrangement that's used to protect older individuals who are suffering from maybe some forms of mental decline, think dementia, Alzheimer's, who have some type of illness that really uh, really keeps them from managing their own affairs, some type of age-related vulnerability, right? If you saw I Care A Lot on Netflix earlier this year, you saw how people, even in those situations, um, when people just, uh, their conservatorships can be used for profit and to exploit the elderly. Anyway, back to our story. Um, during her conservatorship, when she supposedly can't manage her own affairs, right? Brittany has performed regularly in large-scale venues. She's done Vegas residencies. She's recorded several albums. She's had a long-term romantic relationship and she's parented her two children. Let us also not forget that her father has been making money off of her conservatorship. He gets paid $16,000 a month just to be the conservator. And because he's managed her affairs, he's taken cuts from all of her performances, all of her recordings, her residencies, all of those things. Also, she's paying all of his legal fees. During this entire process, she's been paying his legal fees. So to some degree, this is about money and the court should be sensitive to the financial corruption or the potential for it here. Secondly, I think we should also be very aware of the fact that Brittany is performing labor, not at all according to her terms or preferences, and her conservators are exercising control over not just her labor, but her reproductive choices. So I think we should be really sensitive to these forms of bodily control especially as they relate to a 39-year-old woman who for the last 13 years has had no agency or power over her personal life decisions. So it's a little bit about money, a lot about money. It's a little bit or a lot about gender and about the control over women's bodies. So what's next? What's going to happen to Brittany? Well, 
Now it's up to her to file a petition to terminate the conservatorship. She has not done so in the past. She said she was not aware she could do that. She's going to be doing that now. So she'll draft a petition. She'll basically state all the things she stated uh, when she spoke to the court. She'll just put them in her petition and see what happens. So courts, theoretically, generally tend to take the least restrictive approach to binding a person's rights through a conservatorship. They also generally tend to place importance on the perspective of the person under conservatorship. So we'll see if these guidelines hold. If they do, things are looking pretty good for Brittany. If they don't, we'll be seeing Jamie Spears at her at the helm of her conservatorship for a number of years to come, and we'll see a lot more court battles. So fingers crossed and free Brittany.